Well, let's let's take a look at the components of an electric winch. The um, part of this, of course, is a motor. Uh, this this is a 9,000 pound winch. Uh, typically, a motor like this is uh, 256 to one uh, ratio, gear ratio. There's a drum here. This drum is nine inches long, two inches in diameter. And there's a shaft that runs right through the center of that over here to the planetary gears. And this is what's going to give us the uh, power we need. That planetary gears are hooked to the outside of the drum here. Okay. And up here you have your, your electronics, your controller that plugs in. Let me show you that. This is hooked directly to your battery. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> under uh, full pull on this thing, you can be taking like 400 amps out of that battery. And even if you have a heavy duty alternator, at best you're putting 100 amps back in. So it's one reason when we're using this, you, you always leave the engine running. You want to be generating electricity. But that, that's the, one of the limiting factors on how far you can pull. Is once you've drained your battery down, you're going to have to let it recharge. Mm -hmm. It's important to note that the uh, this 9,000 pound uh, pulling capability is only on the first wrap at the bottom. This works a little bit, you know, each wrap you lose 10 to 15 percent of your strength. It's a little bit like uh, uh, a 10 speed bike. Mm -hmm. As this gear gets bigger and bigger, uh, you lose power. So this is your uh, clutch. Turn that and that makes this free wheeling. So you can just pull this out. Mm -hmm makes it a lot easier for rigging. Uh, a common thing to forget is to actually turn, turn the clutch in. back in when you're ready to winch in. Okay. The other thing on this uh, is the brake that you can't see. It's inside. These were designed for pulling in. But once you have, once you stop and you have a load on this, you need something to keep it there so it doesn't come out. And, and they use an internal brake much like you would have on uh, drum, drum brakes on a car mm -hmm. inside there. Obviously not as big. Okay. <laughs> you can visualize it as a... Uh, there's a lot of different schemes, uh, but visualize that there's a, there's a drum about this big around. And on the inside is, a, a, say, two or three brake linings at an angle, and they're beveled like this. Okay. So as we're winding in, they're sliding over it. Actually, they'd be pointing the other way. So right. they're sliding over it. Once you stop, that brake comes on and stops the drum from going forward. It almost wedges it. Yeah, well, it, it, it's just friction. Yeah. There's a couple things that, 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 uh, that results from that. One is never use this as a toe point. You, you, somebody comes up with a strap and they're going to hook onto you, this is really tempting. Mm -hmm. You know, the, just to put a strap on here and pull you. Well, the only thing that's holding that are those brakes in there. Another thing is, when you power out, you're actually powering against those brakes. These weren't designed for, for powering out more than just the distance it takes to take the tension off. They weren't designed for lowering people or lowering vehicles. They were designed for pulling in. Uh, if you ever switch to synthetic rope, one of the issues you have to watch out for is that heat because the synthetic rope will melt at, depending what kind you get, 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 500. And you can create enough heat here, at least in the 300 range, to melt the first wrap on the synthetic rope. Mm -hmm. But that only happens if you power out. Okay. And it won't, it, you won't ever have a problem if you power out 10 feet or something, just take the tension off.